Hello everyone, I am Bosun Omofaye, and in this interview, Mr. Bola Onodele Koko, the Chief Executive Officer of FMDQ Group, discusses his perspectives on transforming the Nigerian financial markets and galvanizing the nation's economy towards creating prosperity for Nigeria and Nigerians. Mr. Bola Onodele Koko, it's nice meeting you for the first time in the new year. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. It's, it's nice uh, uh, making the time to, to speak with us very early in the new year to get a sense of where things were coming from in 2023 and, and what your outlook is for the horizons. Now, Koko, let's get started. The Nigerian government is aiming at a trillion dollar economy by the year 2030, uh, but we're currently pulling GDP at less than 7%. What will it take for us to reach that destination of a trillion US dollars GDP? Thank you, Bosa. You know, um, it's good to have that vision, but there's a lot Nigeria has to do. Um, you start from your economic plan, and that economic plan led by that vision um, would have to then be broken down to actionable plans. Uh, and when you have those plans, the execution would have to be monitored. There has to be reporting at the senior level and people have to be held accountable. Um, that is about the method. The pillars of what to do, um, we can now talk about. First, you want to drive that size of economy. You want to drive huge transformation. You need to look at the building blocks. What sort of laws are going to be in place? What sort of regulation will be in place? What is the plan for the human capital that is going to drive that? So you're thinking of education, you're thinking of health. You're thinking of the state governments. Where are we with our configuration today? And I'm not talking about expenses for running the government. I'm talking about this state, this state's been becoming economically viable. Um, you're looking at the growth. Where is it going to come from? It's definitely not government or public. It's got to be private. So you're looking at a private sector-led economic revolution. We need jobs in this country. Uh, and if you want to do that, the education has to be private sector led. The health sector is very important. Again, it's going to be by welfare programs uh, because the state itself is challenged. But if, if you think of your human capital, you have to always think of education. You have to always think of health. Underpinning all this would be financial markets. What sort of liberalized financial markets are going to have? because the capital to drive the sort of growth we're talking about, some of them are gonna be, um, are gonna come from the external sources. And if they're gonna come from the external sources, foreign exchange market becomes extremely important. The other financial markets, commodities will become extremely important. I mean, in essence, it is, the vision is good, but do we have the economic plan? Are things well articulated? And once we clear that phrase, execution needs to start. Um, I, I think there's still a lot to do, um, but the agenda is good. You always have to start that way. Uh, having a visionary leader, it's of utmost importance, but the discipline for execution is very critical. In your opinion, you think the vision, a trillion dollar target is good, but again, we need to work on, on the milestones to get to that a trillion US dollars. And you said FX is very important here. When you look back at 2016, and it was just in 2024, starting the new year, in terms of the prevailing economic conditions around FX, do you see some similarities or differences? Thank you. Um, Again, fundamentally, um, there's a similarity, and it is about the philosophy of financial markets. Uh, Nigeria 
needs to understand that when some economic fundamentals change, exchange rate will change. You know, you're not going to change what the way things work in the world and everywhere. And you have rational economic agents anyway. So in 2016, you had issues with the crude oil price dropping. Once that occurs in the economy that we have, you will expect depreciation of the Naira. And the earlier you appreciate that is the way you actually then conserve reserves because you don't want to keep selling at so you know, low a rate. You're just wasting money. It, it doesn't work to use, have your crude oil price go down, the major source of earnings. The other agents in you in the market, with you in the market, mm -hmm. start seeing you not taking the right decisions. And for them, it's better to quickly leave because they don't think you're doing the right thing. Oh, great. In 2020 with COVID, yes. at a point crude oil price dropped to $9, and with COVID going on, we had issues with this philosophy again, where Nigeria thought, I've got to fix my exchange rate. You can't fix exchange rate. And I hope we've learned enough that each time we do this, we get into trouble. So you have that fundamental issue with philosophy, and it got us into trouble. But 2016 problem and the scale of that problem, very different from the scale that we have today. But in terms of fixing, um, you're just going to come to the orthodox way to fix the problem. But, but, but what makes it different? The scale is different. Yes. If you look at the size of the market, one is different. If you look at the differential mm. in exchange rates, alternative markets to, well, official, we don't know which one is official anymore because mm. um, I, I went to buy a pen and the invoice was in dollars. The level of dollarization is unprecedented. In the economy. It's unprecedented. Vis-a-vis -vis 2016. Yeah, when people want to give you invoices, they give you the dollar amounts today. That didn't happen in 2016 because no one trust where to benchmark the Naira today. And I, you know, uh, was told that some people are writing contracts already and the benchmark is Aboki FX. So that's, that, that's, that's, that's amazing. That's, um, that tells you that there's a bigger problem you look at the level of inflation and where interest rate is. It's a problem because if you have inflation at 28% and your interest rates are low at single digit, you are encouraging the economic agents to take money out of Naira and put in dollars, especially when the dollar paper of Nigeria itself is higher than the local interest rates. So it's a more complex problem. We can fix it. But we just need to understand the problems and know the decisions to take. The interest rates today to curb the dollarization cannot be at this level, uh, at the level we see today. They have to go higher. I, I'm wondering if there are uh, critical interventions that need to take place today that you think we can onboard in the current situation in which the country is grappling with FX liquidity, very volatile exchange rates at the moment. Talk to me about that. Yeah, the word intervention is good, but let us appreciate the fact that in 2016, we probably had a bit of reserves. Uh, we don't even know the level of reserves we have today. So that helps, though, when you appreciate the situation. Um, we have to look at the right FX market structure for this economy today. And it is one, and I think the central bank started that with June 14 circular last year that says it's a willing buyer, willing seller market. People still talk about managed float. How do you want to have managed float when you don't have reserves to, to, to manage? For, for some time now, we have to let this thing float as much as possible. Um, you know, the regulation for the liberalized market needs to be out and for everybody to read. There are still about 17 circulars from the old ways and administrative controls in the market. No one has rescinded uh, 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 all these circulars. Um, there's no price discovery today. If you ask anyone about the rate for the dollar naira, you're going to get as many rates. Uh, that doesn't help any market. Uh, you also look at the backlog. There's still conversation about the backlog. This has gone on for too long. When you have 
a big issue like that in the market, you need to clear it as much as possible. Now, clearing it doesn't mean you have to provide the dollars because you might not have the dollars, but you have to think of creative ways, structures to help clean up the problem so we can move on. So you need to clean the backlog, get price discovery of some sort. So when everybody, you know, looks at, if I ask you for the alternative rate now, you tell me, oh, 1,250, everyone knows it. If you go to the, you know, so-called autonomous, you know, foreign exchange market, the rates are everywhere. So that's going to be a problem. And that's a problem for those that are looking in to see if they can do stuff with the market. But what is the market today? The market is in the regulation that the central bank will release. People have to be able to read a single circular mm. and say this is the Nigerian market. All in okay. comparison, yeah. all embracing. Yeah, and, and I want to go to this market. Should I go or not is the decision. Interest rate is a factor. Yes. Look, the truth is at the moment, the, the, the first set of monies that will come into this market will be foreign portfolio investors' money. And if those foreign portfolio investments will come, yes. they're going to look at an interest rate. And it has to be one that will attract them to come. They also look at risk management products because it is too speculative today when you move in this first stage into Nigeria. You may not get your dollars immediately you need it. So you need a hedge. All these things we have to put in the market. And for us to understand this is how market works. Now, the market had been broken for some years that you cannot rely on the market itself to provide the risk management products. This is probably the, the intervention that Central Bank can provide today to you know, come back with these non-deliverable forwards, price them at the level of current spot, not at any discount. So the play will be people selling dollars, invest in the paper, you know, fixed income and hedge. If they, if the if the investment matures and they can't take the funds out yet because the FX market is still liquid, at least the non-deliverable forward will hedge the capital. That capital protection is key. And over time, you know, this happened in 2017 to 2020. We had the crisis. We built back a liquid market mm -hmm. because the rates was allowed to move. The non-deliverable forwards were there. They were priced. Uh, at a point, I looked at the July non-deliverable forward of London and the non-deliverable forwards onshore in Nigeria. They were disclosed. Today, we don't even have this in the market anymore. So you, you, you need to design how, what would make things work here for this problem we have today. Knowing that Central Bank does not have that capacity at the moment, I mean, I hear of inflows, 2 billion, 3 billion coming in. You shouldn't even use those to clear backlog. Yeah, you, you, have to, you have to think of how to leverage that. How about using $5 billion you have to buy 30-year zero-coupon US, US treasuries? Treasury. That takes you to about $15 billion. Then mm -hmm. use that investment, 30-year, as collateral to borrow to 15 in. billion. So exactly. you have to think of again, looking, different again, ways. Looking at the at, 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 at the US Treasury, by the way, as one of the world's number one uh, asset class you can have as, as yeah. a central bank. And once you have that collateral, yes. and you then come to the market and say, I'd like to borrow $15 billion, mm. which I'm using to securitize some problems I have. Yeah. And people say, what's the collateral? Oh, there's a 30-year investment maturing. Mm. This was how the Brady bonds was the done bonds. Ma ma I, I many remember, years back. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, so yes, so this sort of structures, we, we need to think of the cocktail of products that so, some investors today may not want to take the risk of the market, but they'll be willing to give the top banks dollars and collect Naira securities. So those sort of swaps and repos, and they have to be registered. There's, there's like that, and they're going to think of risk. We have to appreciate that people are rational investors because if the Naira securities with them uh, have to be used to buy FX at some point in case the, the whoever they gave dollars to is unable to buy, they need something like a CCI, not of CCI of today, but then. So we need to register those repos, those swaps. And if there's a default, it can translate to 
you know, CCIs. There's so many things we have to think of doing. And Nigerians are sitting on dollars. A lot of Nigerians are dollarized. And they took the right decisions. So when people talk about, oh, foreign portfolio investors are hot money, I tell them that Nigerians are, Nigerians' capital, monies they've saved are hotter than FPI's money. Because most people have dollarized. How are you going to encourage them to sell to the market? You have to encourage them to come to the market with some investment that they see at 20-something level. And with the promise that if you're going to go back to dollars someday, yes. you'll be able to do that. Able to do that. And then they relax and start helping everybody. But the, the way it is today, something has to be done. A program has to be released and everyone to believe in the program. But people take rational decisions. A lot of Nigerians have put their dollars in euro bonds. You know, they're earning 11, 12 percent. They're fine with it. Would they be interested in any 25, 30% on the Naira? Yes. Would they do that without a hedge? No. So you give them a paper, you give them a hedge, then they will help you. But we need to, you know. To governize to, it. This market needs to be brought back to life. Without, you, without the FX market, yes. which is the nerve center, we're going to struggle on $1 trillion GDP. We're going to. But again, you can we can discuss uh, FX exchange rate without interest rates. Uh, the government is looking at a better exchange rate, but also wants a, a lower interest rate at the same single digit interest rate at the same time. So these are kind of a Siamese twins. Any government will like low interest rate for the people, right? But that is looking at one side of it. Do, do you want to? That coin has another side. There are pensioners that what they do is to invest their money. Why would they? be earning low interest rate today when inflation is 28. And I think government needs to stop talking about interest rate because that is the purview of the central bank. You know, um, low interest rate will not work at the moment. It will not help to attract inflows into the country. Uh, it doesn't help the federal government. You may think for my debt service, I need low interest rate. But there are other things we can do to address that. The, the problem is Nigeria does not even have any stabilization fund at the moment. So the private sector <laughs> needs to think of the future and tomorrow in creating an economic stabilization fund. Mm -hmm. Such that decisions like this, you know, the, the federal government may want low interest rates for a debt service, but the market is not giving you low interest rates. So from the economic stabilization fund, we can assist government. It has gotten to that point. So the markets are always allowed to play out the allocation of capital. Yes. When you have the high interest rates, at some point, they will moderate inflation. Mm. They will moderate dollarization. Today, if you do not, you can offer Nigerians less than euro bond interest rate and expect them, with the way Naira is dropping in the markets, to stay in Naira. And that is a bigger problem than for government managing. In the first place, the high exchange rate would help government at the moment. Yes. Because its revenue is much higher to yes. balance the, you know, whatever debt service cost mm. uh, uh, it's pursuing. And government needs to look at its own expenditure as well. You know, a lot of people have, have spoken to that. Um, so in my mind, you're going to have the first wave of foreign portfolio investors to help you kickstart um, and bring back, revive the FX market before foreign direct investments will look into this market. You know, and that's where things like infrastructure would have to come in. Again, infrastructure, government can no longer fund it. We need to just get realistic with concessions in this country and you allow bankable projects to, to, to be handled with foreign capital, a massive one. You've got an economy of 250 million people. There's a market. But the market has to be effective. They must have strong demand. So they need jobs. Mm. The jobs cannot come until the companies thrive. The companies cannot thrive until infrastructure is in place. So if, if we don't start working hard on so many things, security, infrastructure, uh, the security government will fund that. But infrastructure, I think the Nigerian government may not have the capacity to fund the sort of infrastructure that would take Nigeria to be, you know, a, a first uh, uh, um, class nation. It's just gotten to that point. But mm -hmm. other places we go, people think it's government that funded infrastructure, and it's not the government. You know, the private sector funds this thing. What government needs to put is the enabling environment, handle security, put laws and regulations that are business friendly, mm -hmm. and capital 
capital will go to where it is wanted. <laughs> that want is first to attract it, mm -hmm. and the second is to retain it. What is the place of debt in this entire conversation? About how we grow the economy, how we developed, using infrastructure fund, what else needs to be done to manage our debts while we don't really sink further into debt situation? Yes, Bosa, if you're looking at debt, you're looking at leverage. And I spoke to the country itself today doing some creative financing to use debt. You have to use debt. If you want your own personal market value to go up, you're going to use debt. Mortgages will be debt. You know, housing finance for Nigerians is debt. Now, when, when, when you get all those, everyone is borrowed, you know, you think of prosperity of Nigerians, you then pull all this together to issue mortgage-backed securities. That is debt. Then when you securitize them, people outside can bring capital into your country. They will only do that if your FX market works. As they bring in capital, they repatriate, things are flowing. Mm -hmm. And that's why the design, we have to be serious about the design. So individuals need debts for prosperity. The state governments need debts. They can't access the market because they've not done the right things. We have to insist on how things will play and to appreciate the role of debts. The federal government needs debt, but it doesn't mean you're going to be able to borrow, you know, the ways that means, you know, they have to fix that. There's a capacity to man's debt. I can't borrow five times my salary today. How am I going to pay back? So debt is good. It helps you improve your return on investment. It helps you to improve your market value. So debt has a place in this drive for prosperity. The banks cannot lend today because of the way the excess CRR and all those things are being managed. How are we going to have this growth if the banks do not have capacity to lend? That money creation, businesses will need to borrow. So debt has its place and debt must, um, um, that, that market, debt markets must, we must ensure that, you know, they're thriving as well. The issue of interest rates is allocation of capital. At a point, interest rates will be high. Mm -hmm. At some point, the it's price of money. It, it will be low. Today, banks hardly have capacity to lend. So that whole space, we have to look at it because banks must be able to lend to businesses to thrive. So yes, debt for individuals, <laughs> for Nigerians, debt useful for businesses, debt useful for state government. Even federal government should do, you know, debts, but you have to be disciplined with it. What are you using the debts for? Well, you borrow. Even individually, do you borrow money and then throw a party? You borrow for an asset that you believe in future is generating revenue, then you can pay the debt back. So that that is good. It's been close to 20 years or, or more when we talk about the financial system uh, the FSS 2020, I'm sure, back then. Do you think we can revisit that? Do you think there's something we can learn on how to provide a better architecture for the Nigerian financial system over the next five, 10 years and more? Thank you, Bosa. That's a good question. And I like the point you, you know, your reference to Vision 2020. The FSS 2020. So, so, so remember where we started. It's good mm -hmm. to have vision. But mm -hmm. what happened? The pillars of FSS 2020 are three. The first one, strengthen your domestic markets. Are we there? That was vision for 2020. Mm. We're not there. The second <laughs> pillar was, once you strengthen your domestic financial markets, you then have linkage with external markets. And the third, build an international financial center. Mm. So this is the point. You can have vision. But if you don't do the right things, the architecture, the structure, the monitoring, the reporting, and going back to look at it, you won't get there. So it's good as a soundbite. I want to have a one trillion, you know, economy. But are we going to do all the right things? You can't want to strengthen your domestic markets and move from a liberalized FX market to a controlled one where central bank becomes the only seller. It's not possible in this market anymore. So in terms of that, financial sector, uh, the financial system, the restructuring and transformations. There's a lot of work to do in that space. Uh, and for me, you look at the capital market itself. The capital market needs massive development. That space has not developed um, in years. In actual fact, from 2019 to date, probably we've had one, one IPO 
in the country. As of May, when I checked, mm. the U.S. had 850 IPOs. So you start looking at the equity market. You, you look at the debt markets not growing. You, you, you look at the commodities market not growing. There's something to do about markets, something that will transform the way Nigerian markets because to fire the economic revolution, you need markets, and those markets need to be strong. You want to do student loans. Those student loans have to be packaged into securities at some point to be sold to the market. So first is that the primary lenders will, will do the work, but at some point they need the, the short-term players. So if a student loan is not for one year, the bank's money is for one year. So the banks keep we should keep booking them, but. Once they season them, they sell it to people that are willing to hold them for 20 years. Mm. It's the same thing we did with NMRC. Then you go back. But today, there is no creation of new mortgages for NMRC to buy for 20 years. So it's a little bit so stagnant. The things are stagnant at the primary level. The money market, the FX market, the, the equity there. market, mm. that, those, that space needs a lot of work. The infrastructure for the economy, we've talked about that. So we've talked on some of these things. Um, I see in the next 10 years, we're going to spend two, three years rebuilding. But we need to rebuild with, the, you know, the crisis. At times, you must, make, you, you must make use of the crisis. This is a period for us to really think of the market structure we want in the next 10 years. But the first two years, we're going to be cleaning things up. There's a lot of housekeeping that would have to go on the next two years. For the next 10 years, um, I, I hope we have an equity market that will be a pride of Nigerians, where IPOs go on in Nigeria, where Nigerians are connected with offshore markets. I'm hoping we have a money market that will allow transmission of monetary policy today there's no connection between policy rate. Um, and we can see that the central bank has relaxed talking about NPR. We have not had any monetary policy committee meetings. Nobody knows what is coming. But for financial markets, communication is highly, highly important. At some point, the communication can be structured, but you have to address markets and share vision with the markets and everyone will be working. It's like an orchestra. Is, is, is financial markets is very interesting, but someone has to lead the vision and say, this is where we're going. Um, I hope that vision uh, uh, for the markets will be in place very soon. Um, but you want a money market where it's easy to tap, people can access easily, you know, it's easy to book loans. You know, you should just try and, you know, read through the process to buy a house in the United States or United Kingdom. You know, um, um, we have to get prosperity. Prosperity must be, for, for Nigerians, must be our objective. And then you walk back. How do we provide prosperity to these people? What, what are the things they need? I think that would be my, my parting shot because I want to be sharing that prosperity. Yeah. But first, uh, uh, what's your take if you're going to securitize the National Assembly? Uh, give approval for the secretization of our seven points on whatever brilliant narrow of ways and means mm. that's going to come to the marketplace I, I, ideally the, the law does not uh, permit the central bank to underwrite because the, the the overdraft is with central bank so the central bank cannot be an investor so the the 22.7 that was done last year they, they need to look at that because if you go to the cbn act it allows ways and means but it says where there's securitization of the ways and means, do not underwrite that paper, any of the papers. So ideally, they have to be sold to the market. Yes. That, that is the way to securitize. So the Minister of, fi the Minister of Finance and the, the, the DMO will have to lead that. They, they have to lead that. And I think some, some work was done towards the end of the year on mm, that. Last year. Uh, and now, Central Bank can be a secondary buyer of the paper. So we have to understand it. But okay. the primary securitization, Central Bank cannot be involved. Now, if banks buy the paper and they want to repo with Central Bank or sell to Central Bank, that is a different issue. Transaction. That is now a secondary market. Mm. So the securitization is good. And I think cleaning up the ways and means to return 
fiscal responsibility at the highest level is highly important. Um, then, you know, that paper comes to the market and any, anyone can be an investor in that paper. It will help, you know, um, um, move capital and liquidity because uh, the first buyer may want to sell, so, so that market should be created. Uh, once the fiscal discipline is in place at the national level, then we think of the states. Are we still happy with this configuration? You know, when you run an entity, or you run Nigeria or any geographical structure. You can change things if the purpose is for future and it will benefit everybody. Are we still happy with 36 states? Or we need to streamline things because of the cost of governance. How many commissioners, how many personal, I mean, there's just a lot for a, a country that is not as buoyant. Maybe Nigerians need to know that Nigeria is not as buoyant as it used to be, but its potential is a potential, you know, <laughs> uh, financial power in the world if or, the right things are done. Or, or, we, or, or, we, de or de de we, we, we find a way to make them not just cost centers, but revenue centers, yeah, investment so, windows. Yeah, yeah, yes. Because every corner of the 36 states that makes, uh, including the FCT, has got one opportunity, one whatever resource that. It's fit for purpose. You're right. Does the law permit them to exploit this? That's a, that's a conversation. That's a conversation. If those things are all in the exclusive list, why is mining with the federal government? The, 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 if you have gold in a, 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 a Zamfara, let Zamfara State be able to work with the businessmen on the best way to get this thing to mine. Mm. And the states and the people, we, we may need to look at some restructuring that will work for the next 50, 40 years of Nigeria. But the way things are going on today, we need this leader, the president, to get everyone aligned to say, we've got to change things. Mm -hmm. You know, when we're under military, it may be easier to cut from six regions, from four to 12 states, 36 states. It's the same way that we have to appreciate that things are not as rosy as they were, and to take very hard decisions. You know, we all run institutions. When things are challenging, revenue are challenging, you have to get your spear of scissors to do the right thing to expenses. We haven't talked about FMDQ so far in this conversation. And, and I'm sure you'll be wondering, why haven't I asked that question? Well, we're dealing with national issues. <laughs> <laughs> FMDQ is just, you know, uh, um, um, one of the players in the market. You are the powerhouse. It's the new year. So what's on the horizon? What's your playbook for FMDQ as a very critical enabler in Nigeria's entire financial system, fixed income, derivatives, uh, interest rates, whatever you have in the portfolio, including the FX market. What are you up to and your team in the new year? Yeah, but uh, you know, as I said, um, FMDQ is a financial market infrastructure. In 10 years, we focused on building one infrastructure or the other, you know, move to an exchange, we built a clearinghouse, a, a central counterparty, which we're waiting for the Nigerian markets to use. You know, uh, um, we've built everything to world class standards. We've put, you know, default resolution reserve in place. You know, um, but if you don't have, you know, vi you know, viable spot markets, you cannot have derivatives market. And this has been built to delist the financial markets for the Nigerian economy. We're waiting for that to happen. Uh, we, we built a new depository with world-class technology. Uh, we keep doing what we need to do uh, uh, to, to support the economy. But our strategic role goes beyond um, organizing the market, whether it's post-trade or you know, pre-trade pre itself. As you mentioned, we also offer to advise uh, uh, the regulators and government, you know, um, and we hope some of those are useful. We think of the big problems in Nigeria and we want them solved because if Nigeria, if the big economy itself is not solved, our businesses will not grow. I, I mean, 10 years ago when we had the vision of where FMDQ will be and the markets will be, the numbers were bigger than what we've seen because, but, but then, we don't control the markets, right? <laughs> we, we, we can have that vision and try to work with people. If we start playing with philosophy today, liberalized market, controlled market, 
it's not going to help anybody. So, so yes, we, 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 we engage a lot of advocacy and engagement. Um, we also take the uh, financial market diplomacy very seriously. Uh, and when we, we play our role as the financial markets diplomat, um, we, 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 we take Nigeria outside, talk to economic agents outside about Nigeria and what is going on. Whether it's great or not, we have to do that job. The, the truth is, when it's rosy, they don't need to talk to us. But when things are challenging, we go out there to talk to them. You get, more phone, you get more phone calls. Yeah, we, we are in, these days there's Zoom calls and people want to really understand why Nigeria, a great nation, is just scoring own goals all the time. I mean, people wonder. People want to do business with Nigeria. You can't, you can't ignore this potential economic power. It's left to Nigeria to do what is right. And that doing what is right includes, do we want prosperity for Nigerians? You, you go to other countries and you hear this was what Dubai was like 50 years ago. And you see what's happened. Singapore was independence in 1965, given some you know, land to just go and do whatever they want. Nobody thought anything would come out of it. That is Singapore of today. No you know, natural resource, biggest exporter of this, biggest refinery, biggest that, biggest business, number three in FX market in the world. How did that happen? <laughs> so it starts with leadership. It starts with staying with your philosophy. It starts with attracting capital. Everything is attracted to Singapore. But the people, there's no homeless in Singapore. So is there someone with that sort of dream for Nigeria? And if that person exists, let the person come get people together, build the economic plan, and we'll be strict with it. We're not going to build, you know, an economic power with so many things that happen here, lawlessness, indiscipline by people that actually should be, you know, uh, enforcing laws and stuff. There's just a lot to do. But we can't keep ignoring that. Someone has to be bold enough to say, I'm going to lead this. And again, there must be a space for zero corruption. You get involved with corruption, you deal with that. I don't want to talk about the other side of Singapore mm. and how the man dealt with things that they all agreed should not happen. Mm. They, 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 dealt, yeah. they dealt with it very quickly. And people ask, where is Coco? They say, well, he got involved with this, is no more. So that was how, you know, if you have a vision of what to build. I tell people Singapore is heaven <laughs> on earth. You can go there. There was a time I spent three weeks. The only time someone, someone, press the horn of a car once in three weeks. There was no litter on the road. It wasn't like that when they got the land right. to start Singapore. Mm -hmm. you, you go to Singapore, the, a country, a, a very small country, and you see the, the port, and you see uh, ships coming in and out, 24 hours to clear your goods. So when you say, what do we need to do? Mm -hmm. Try and import things to the Nigerian ports and see what goes on. But a leader, who has purpose and is determined to change this country would have to deal with all those things. And they have to be dealt with decisively. And, and people that compromise anything, uh, uh, to that, anything that will compromise the achievement of that vision would have to be we dealt with. Decisive yeah, and mm. in 10, 20 years, we start, people see a country and will not believe this was Nigeria of old, but we, we just have to change in so many ways. I love the word. I, li I like that as a party. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you so Bosa. much. Balad Ali Koko, the CEO at uh, FMDQ for this insightful conversation. Thank Always you so a much. pleasure. I wish you all the best in the new year. Thank you very much. Always a pleasure.